Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting computer science video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the science behind electronic components and we're going to focus on microcontrollers and temperature sensors and then even more specifically the AT Mega microcontroller and the TMP36 temperature sensor. Okay, so first up we're going to be talking about microcontrollers and a few of the topics we'll be going over are what is a microcontroller? some of the components uh, that microcontrollers have, how microcontrollers are used in circuits, how they are drawn in circuits, what the inside of a microcontroller looks like, so kind of a, a map, if you will, of the inside of one, some of the different sizes of microcontrollers, and also applications, so how we are using it in our class. All right, so I get it, you know, you're confused. You're wondering, what is this big word that I keep throwing around, microcontroller? Well, it's really quite simple. Essentially, a microcontroller is a miniature computer. And the way that I like to think of it is that uh, the computers that we use, such as like the one that you're most likely watching this video on, like a MacBook or something like that, is called a general purpose computer. Whereas a microcontroller could be called a special purpose computer. So they do one thing very, very well. Uh, they can be found all over your house in various appliances such as TV remotes, microwaves, and coffee makers. They are small in size, they have low cost, and low power consumption. And because of these three beneficial reasons, they are very common. So nowadays, microcontrollers can come in a variety of different sizes and powers and even sometimes shapes. However, the majority of modern microcontrollers contain three key things. First of these is the processing core, which acts as the brain of the microcontroller. Essentially, it is responsible for reading directions from the program memory, which then tells the rest of the microcontroller what to do through using the outputs. Next, like I mentioned before, is the program memory. And I kind of touched on this. This contains the instructions of what the processing core needs to tell the rest of the microcontroller what to do. And lastly, we have inputs and outputs, and these are used for processing and so both giving and receiving external data. So here's a little bit more about the process, and specifically, the process is divided into four parts, with the first of these being the fetch part. So the fetch step is uh, pretty simple. It kind of makes sense based on the name. It's uh, when the processing core basically retrieves the instructions that are waiting for it, in the program memory. The next step is the decode step. So after the processing core has fetched the instructions from the program memory, it goes on to decode it and to figure out what it needs to do. So there's often multiple areas that are involved with these new instructions such as the arithmetic section of the processing core and in the decoding section this is when the processing core kind of does all this math and figures out exactly what is going on. After the processing core has figured out all the things that it needs to do, it can then go to work. This third step is called execute. And this is basically where, it's pretty simple, the processor knows exactly what it needs to do and then actually goes along and does it. This part varies a lot because of the freedom that you have with what you want to tell the microcontroller what to do. So this is when it connects to your inputs and outputs. Um, it can read input values from the input sensors and it can also uh, give values to the output sensors and tell them what to do. The final step of the process that a microcontroller goes is just called repetition. You know, it goes, it goes back and it repeats everything that it just did. Um, the actual process itself goes by incredibly fast and, and it does it over and over and over until you tell it not to or until you unplug it or take away the power or any number of things. So if you're really having trouble understanding uh, these different components, here's kind of a simple way to think about it. So on the right here, we have our mailman. And every time you turn on your microcontroller or Arduino, he brings a letter to this guy over here. We'll call him Bob for the time being. Our mailman's name is Program Memory. And then he gives this letter, which has the code and instructions. He gives it to Bob. And by the way, Bob's actual name is the processing core. So Bob takes these instructions and then he goes blah, blah, blah. And he tells, um, he tells his friends, the workers or the outputs, what they should be doing with this information. 
but at the same time, Bob or the processing core is receiving information from the input guys. Now, I couldn't really think of a good name to call them, so we'll just call them input guys. Not only does Bob receive information from them, but he gives information to the worker guys. So to recap, every time you turn on your microcontroller, the mailman or the program memory comes and gives the code with the instructions of what to do to the processing core, or Bob in this diagram. Bob then tells the output guys, or the workers, what they should do with that information. However, at the same time, the input guys are also telling the processing core, or Bob, their information, which then Bob can decide what to do with it, and again, tell the output guys what they should do. Okay, so we've already talked a lot about the purpose of a microcontroller and what it does. And from that information, you can pretty much deduce how you would use it in a circuit. But just to recap, the microcontroller is the brains of a circuit. All the inputs and outputs and the code that gets run all happens because of a microcontroller. So now you know a little bit more about uh, the purpose of a microcontroller and how you would use one. But now it's important to kind of think, okay, well, now that I use it, how do I show it? How do I draw it in a circuit diagram? And as I mentioned before, there are many different uh, types of microcontrollers, like different specific models. So the way that they're drawn in circuit diagrams tends to vary. Here we have pictured the way that our personal Arduino Uno looks when you draw it in a circuit diagram. You can see that it has its analog inputs on the left side and all of its outputs on the right side. But other microcontrollers will look different when you draw them for circuit diagrams. Here are some examples. So what we actually have here is an inside look, or the map as I mentioned earlier, of the AT Mega Microcontroller. First off, I think it's important to note that the AT Mega Microcontroller is the actual microcontroller that is used on the Arduino Uno. So uh, later on we'll show a picture of the Arduino Uno and if you look uh, for the specific microcontroller aspect of it, it is the AT Mega Microcontroller. So this is the one we're looking at right now. Now if you try to read all of these different labels here on the right side, you'll notice that a lot of them seem very complicated and you've never heard these words before. That's okay. Just the main thing that you should know is uh, this diagram kind of helps you to appreciate all of these different components that are within this microcontroller. We've, we've really only scratched the surface talking about uh, what's going on in here. And, but if you do take a close look, you can identify some of the input and output ports at the top and bottom. So the last thing that we should talk about for microcontrollers is how it applies to our learning. So in our class, the Arduino board that we use, um, I know there, there might be some confusion because I mentioned that it has the AT Mega microcontroller, but um, think of the Arduino board as the entire uh, microcontroller so it has its inputs and outputs and things like that and it stores the code but where the actual processing core is where all the operations take place that all takes place in the AT Mega microcontroller so our Arduino boards they have all the parts that microcontrollers have they have our inputs and outputs they have our program memory they have our processing core and we are really learning the basics of how to use microcontrollers to perform tasks. We are learning how to code, we're learning really how they're used in everyday life. So the next electronic component that we will be discussing and look, taking a look at in a lot less detail than we did microcontrollers is the temperature sensor and specifically the one that we use in class which is the TMP36. So some fast facts about the TMP36 is that for number one, it's very diverse. So it can measure a, uh, a great range of temperatures all the way from negative 50 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. Um, the way that it works, which we will talk about, makes it very accurate. It can give very accurate readings and it is also low in cost. And again, for these three reasons, it is very popular. This is what the TMP36 looks like, and you'll notice that it has three pins. It has its voltage input pin, where it gets its power. Uh, in the middle, it has its analog voltage out. This is where it um, outputs the data that will then be collected by the uh, processing core. And then on the right side, we have its ground pin, which 
pretty self-explanatory, must be connected to the ground. This is what all that I just mentioned with the three different pins will look like when it's connected from an Arduino to a breadboard with the pin on the right being connected to the ground, the pin in the middle being connected to an input pin on the um, Arduino, and then the pin on the left is connected to the input power, so the voltage that goes into the temperature sensor. The TMP36 does not use thermosistors, or which are temperature sensitive resistors, or mercury like old thermometers, or bimetallic strips like old stoves. Instead it uses what's called the property of diodes, and this property states that as a diode changes temperature, the voltage changes with it at a known rate. So what the TMP36 does is that it measures the small change in temperature and outputs an analog voltage between 0 and 1.75 VDC or direct current voltage based on this. To get the temperature from this we just need to measure the output voltage and do a little bit of math. So the formula is as follows. The temperature in degrees Celsius is equal to the output voltage in millivolts minus 500 and all of this is divided by 10. So for example, if we had an output voltage of 1 volt, this means that our formula would look like 1000 millivolts because 1 volt converted to millivolts is 1000. So 1000 millivolts minus 500 divided by 10 and we end up with 50 degrees Celsius. So finally we have how we draw the TMP36 in circuit diagrams. Similar to microcontrollers, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. On the right um, is a more sophisticated way to represent it in a circuit diagram. Uh, looks a bit more formal. However, on the left here is how it is drawn in the Arduino textbook. So you simply just have a square to indicate the sensor. And then next to it, you have the words temperature sensor to show what it is. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, not much to mess up here. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to know about microcontrollers and temperature sensors, specifically the TMP36. I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, there's not much else to say other than that. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.